morning, everyone. Good to see you today. Yay. Hey, it's the month of um, November, so our opening song for all the whole month, um, except for the last Sunday, which where we'll start Advent, is going to be Count Your Blessings. So let's all stand and sing that song. We know what it is. We've sung it many a time. falling back into a soft pillow. We allow ourselves to feel that peace of God moving through us. Allowing us to know that all is well. All is well. And then as we're in that heart space, in that beautiful place where we know our oneness with this infinite power and presence that we call God, we begin to feel thanksgiving. Gratitude, appreciation. What's one thing that would enliven that within you? What's one thing right this minute you could say, oh my gosh, I feel such gratitude. And allow that feeling to well up inside of you. And it's in that consciousness of peace and gratitude that we celebrate this time together. We're all here. We're all together. And we're surrounded in love. And so it is. Amen. Amen. All right. 
Okay, so now let's affirm uh, what Unity Williamsburg is all about. Let's affirm this together. Unity Williamsburg is a radiant center of divine life, light, and love. We are a thriving, prosperous spiritual community that honors the divine presence in all and celebrates our oneness through loving service in our community. Yeah, that's who we are. That's what we're all about. So let us stand now and greet each other with that beautiful Christ greeting, where we say to one another that the Christ in me greets the Christ in you. So please stand and just take a moment and look in someone's eyes and let them know who they are. And in unity, the idea of the Christ is I recognize your godness. I recognize your magnificence. I see you with the eyes of God. You are the eyes of God. You are the life of God. You are the love of God. You are the joy of God. You are the peace of God. And I see that in you when I, when I say that the Christ in me greets the Christ in you. Um, let us say our Lord's Prayer. If you want to uh, stand up again, and then we'll go right into our next song. Let's say our Lord's Prayer together. Uh, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Yes, you are. 
We can feel your energy and we can feel your, your love too. And come join us sometime when you're ready. Um, so what about, anyone have um, a prayer request on something that they're concerned about and or just a celebration that they want to tell us about so we can all pray together about that? Yes, please. I have a couple. Okay. The first is I'd like healing for whatever was the situation that led someone to steal my wallet last week from Harris Peter. Um, the second is gratitude to all the people who helped me clean up the big mess that it was. And thirdly, a special gratitude to uh, the people at the voters registration office who found out that in the meantime I've been declared dead and <laughs> oh my got me reorganized. Wow. And then gratitude for the little miracles in our life. Because had that not happened, I would have walked up to the polls and not been able to vote. Wow. Wow. Well, we, we, yeah, we're going to celebrate yeah. so many things with you. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. Um, the prayer for calm for our nation during this next week with the elections coming up. Mm -hmm. And celebration, I got to hug my grandkids yesterday. I think that's the first time I've hugged them since 10 months. So. Wow. Mm -hmm. Nice. Bob? Uh, um, I'd like to mention, that for any of y'all who get the Daily Press, you may have seen this morning Larry Haas's uh, obituary. Uh, Larry Haas was a, one of the original founders of our church back in 1999. Uh, he, his family was very active. Uh, his wife Susan and their two boys were here for many, many years. And Jan and I attended their graduation up at uh, the military academy up in, in near Charlottesville. And uh, when I was president of the board, Larry served as my vice president for like five years. And, and was very supportive, and it was only right near the end of that five years that he, we saw that he was starting to fail. And it's just been a slow, gradual increase in his loss of abilities and memories and, and so forth. So uh, just thought I'd like to recognize him for being a long-time, long-time member of our church. Oh, and you put the obituary on the bulletin board. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I, I, po I posted the obituary in there if anybody would like to read it. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for bringing that, Bob. Jan, did you marry them? No. No, okay. I was done. I guess I was thinking of something else. But I was coming across some pictures the other day of when we were signing for the building. And there was Larry oh. sitting at the table uh, signing, signing with all the board at that time about the building. So, yeah, he's been a long time member of the church. And just a beautiful presence. His whole family uh, have, have been just so supportive of the church, so we, we bless them. All right, we have our, our prayer that we can all say together about these things, unless there's anybody else. Anybody else that have something that we'd like to hold in prayer? Yes. Um, I'd like to hold my daughter-in-law, Lama, in prayer for peace and for tranquility. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let us say this together. As we set ourselves in the one presence and one power, we realize that our thoughts have the power to heal and bless. We send them out and out very well. Peace, joy, and life to situations and celebrations that have been requested. Thought by thought and prayer by prayer, we transform the world. Our Reverend Jan Sloan to come up here. I got so many papers up here, Jan. You get all, I don't know where anything is. Well, I think I've got mine in order. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What do you say? Well, I think I've got it. Okay, I got it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Very good. Very good. Hi, uh, beautiful, beautiful, good morning. Just curious if this group of people knows what I mean when I say, and the people said. Did you know what usually follows that? Well, I'm going to try it and see how many <laughs> And the people said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a, a day today that we can say amen to.
because we are here with God and God is with us. And we are so glad and so happy with that idea. Our uh, daily word will be the first thing we have. And I think that everyone here probably knows what our daily word is. Sometimes people come and we say uh, daily word and they don't know. But it is our monthly ma magazine, if you want to call it such, with from Unity Village. And our blessing of the day is, I bless the people whose lives have touched mine. And let's repeat that together. I bless the people whose lives have touched mine. And when we stop and think about that, we can't even remember how many people have touched our lives in some way. And then we have to remember that we are touching other people in the same manner. Grandparents, parents, siblings, Members of my extended family, teachers, friends, co-workers, every person I have ever known has, by his or her example, helped me feel more deeply what it means to be human. Some have encouraged my curiosity. Some have taught me life skills. Some have molded positive ideas and behaviors. Some have loved me learn to love even the loving felt this, this difficult. Today I remember the people whose lives have touched mine. I pause to think kindly of each one as I sever memories of time we spent together. Whether we are still in one another's lives, have lost touch, or separated by death, I know the experiences we have shared continue to enrich our lives and we deeply bless us on our spiritual journey. And the scripture that goes with that is Romans 1 and 9. I remember you always in my prayers. The scripture reading for the day is Isaiah 65, 17 to 19. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in whatever I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it, or the cry of distress. We will now have the song, Open My Eyes That I May See. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Did you want the other one or no? The meditation thing? After the message. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, thank you. All right, so we're going to talk today where I'm going to ask you to use your power of imagination. And we are going to imagine that we are at a train station. We're ready to get on the train. And then we're going to talk about where this train is going to take us. So, Susan, get us on that train. <laughs> <laughs> All aboard. That's good. <laughs> All right. There you go. We're, coming, we're pulling out of Williamsburg. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Um, I had heard about this idea of the evolution of consciousness, and it really made a difference in my life. I, I started to understand, um, I, or I should say more compassionate with people, because I understood things in a little different way. So imagine that you're on a train, and imagine that you're sitting in the front, and then you have the folks that are sitting in the middle, and then there's folks sitting at the back. That's where the club car is. Okay? So a lot of us wind up back in the back, but and imagine this this train is long. Long. The train started 250,000 years ago. So you can imagine all the people that have been on this train over time. And the beauty part is when you think about it, if we're sitting in the front of the train and we're looking out the window and we are seeing snow-covered mountains, we are seeing the sun glistening off the snow that looks like diamonds. We see the, the, the um, uh, snow all around the ponds and the lakes. And we are just enthralled with the beauty of that. I could be sitting in the middle of the train. And what am I looking out at? I might be looking out at the savannas, where there's open fields, totally different banyan trees offering shade to the animals. And then I could be sitting at the back of the train, and when I look out that window, um, oh gosh, I forgot what I was going to say. Hold on, let me get it. Uh, at the back of the train, <clears throat> I thought I had it all memorized. I am seeing um, the, the redwood trees and, and all colored flowers and beauty, absolute beauty, out of those windows on that train at the back. Now, if I'm at the front and I am so enthralled with the beauty of the snow and the diamonds and I run to the back of the train, guys, guess what? Guess what I saw? These uh, mountains covered with snow. It's so beautiful. You won't believe, it's, it's, it's hard to imagine. And they're going, yeah, great. Sure. I mean, they may think there's something wrong with me. They may even want to throw me off the train because they haven't seen it yet. They can't even imagine what that might be like as that train very slowly keeps going along the track. Eventually, the people in the back will begin to see the savannas and the beautiful, uh, the beautiful grounds that that will show. And then eventually, those people will see the snow-covered mountains and the glistening of the sun off the snow. But while, while we're in that train, literally all I see is what is out my window. And I have a hard time believing that there's something other than this. Like I said, if I came running from the front to the back, people would wonder, who is this person? What the heck are they talking about? This is crazy. Do you see when people are sitting or in different um, places in that evolutionary process, that their whole idea of what the world is like is different. And it's different not because, oh my gosh, why, why, why don't they get it? 
How many times have you talked to somebody about unity and said, I don't understand why this place isn't filled with people? Why don't people see and understand things the way we teach? Right? But if I'm looking out a particular window, and this is what I have learned from my family, this is what everybody <clears throat> in, in my culture does, and this could look a little, I don't get it. I don't know what these people are talking about. I don't even understand remotely what, they, what they're talking about. And so what it helped me do is to understand that wherever people are, that's okay. That's the window that they are looking out of. And they truly cannot see something different until they're ready. Until that train moves them along a little bit, and now all of a sudden, it's a whole new picture. It's a whole new way of thinking. It's a whole new worldview out of my window now. And now I can begin to understand things differently. And all through our life, we are moving through the train. Originally, this idea of the evolution of consciousness was called spiral dynamics. And it talks about us going up a spiral. I use the train because I, I don't know, I have a real issue with higher consciousness. And then, okay, well, what does that mean? You've got lower consciousness. It doesn't make sense to me. We're all walking each other home, right? So when I'm on a train, it seems we're all traveling together on the tracks. We just have different, um, different windows that we're looking out of. And they talk about nine levels. So imagine lots and lots of cars on this train starting about 250,000 years ago to 35,000 years ago. It's called the beige. They, they pick some colors just in order to help people understand the process of this. During that time, our bodies were developing. What do you think we were thinking about? Survival, right? We weren't thinking about, I wonder if there's going to be computers invented in a couple, you know, in another thousands of years or whatever, or telephones or cars. No, you're in survival mode. The world view was biological needs only. We were a part of nature, and God was a God of the earth. Then the train keeps moving. 35,000 to 10,000 years ago, they call it the purple meme. Meme is just a, um, a view, a world view. 35,000 to 10,000 years ago, people started to move into another car of the train. Their vision started to change, right? They went from survival mode to actually forming tribes. They began to realize that they were, if they were in groups, they could be safer, right? We could help each other out. You go out and hunt the animals. We'll stay here and take care of the kids and, and do things at, at home, raise vegetables or, or whatever they needed to do. But they realized as a tribe they could feel safe, and then they could begin to move around the earth. The belief at that time was um, mystical. Um, spirits in nature. They lived by the seasons. They developed myths and traditions. They enjoyed rituals and celebrations. The God was a God of polytheism. There were angels, evil spirits, talking animals, fertility gods. And guess what? These gods now, this is their consciousness. This is what they're thinking, looking out their window. i got to make these gods happy. So they would sacrifice, even do human sacrifices to these gods in hopes that the gods would have them have a better harvest or be able to continue to um, be healthy and their family safe. Then about 10,000 to 2,000 years ago, the personal ego began to emerge. And only the strong survived. Might is right. The survival of the fittest. And in this consciousness, guess what? There was war. A lot of war. If, I have some, if you have something I want, I'm just going to come and take it. I had no idea of, of, of kind of right and wrong. I had no conscience about it. So it wasn't like I'm gonna, I can get blamed for what I did. No, this is the window I was looking at with 
How many people were looking out that same window at that time and trying to live on this earth? The God of red was a warrior God. And get this, this is so, this is so interesting because this God was only concerned about his people. Now, doesn't that sound like the Old Testament? I mean, the Israelites, that was God's chosen people. So what did, what did God do? He sent the plagues into Egypt so that they could let his people would be free. He was with the people night and day. But this was where they were in their mind about how their God would be. It, it, it's so fascinating when you see how this kind of progresses. It was an agricultural age. War was constant. The God required the elimination of other gods. Now remember, because during that time, this idea of one God started to surface. So again, the train is moving. They had many, many, many gods. Now all of a sudden it's like, no, maybe there's just one God. So out that window was this view of one God. And look how the Israelites got into trouble. And for years and years and years, people couldn't, no, that's, that's ridiculous. There's many gods. Remember, they were talking about the God that, that offered, uh, wanted you to offer sacrifice. Remember when Abraham was asked by God to kill his son? I mean, it seemed like, what? Why would God do that for crying out loud? But that's where, that's where they were. That's where they were looking out that window of what their God would look like. Then about 2,800 years ago to 400 years ago, the blue meme came along, the blue ideas, the blue consciousness. People began to develop an idea of law and order. We began to look for meaning in our lives and a willingness to sacrifice for a reward in the future. A sense of guilt began to emerge. The God of the blue, or the people that were looking out of that window, lived in the sky. It was a God of law that had both positive and negative attributes. Now remember, as this train is moving, you all of a sudden don't go from this window to this window. There is a time frame that this train carries you down the track. So all of a sudden, overnight, everybody doesn't go, oh, one God, okay, that's what we're gonna do. Oh, oh, we're gonna do this, oh, we're gonna, no. It takes several generations before that whole idea really comes to pass, because it doesn't just happen overnight. The other thing to just think about as we move along here is we, um, they call it transcending and including. You know, the beige, we still have that part within us that says we need to survive. Now, remember like years ago, um, and, and think about it today with all the hurricanes and the natural disasters, people will actually start, they have to survive. They, they will find a way to survive. And then all of a sudden, people start coming together in, in tribes or neighborhoods and saying, we got to take care of each other. You know, things, you know, things are um, not the way that they used to be. So we still have those tendencies, you know, through all of these different ideas. They're still a part of who we are. We take the ones that we like, and we leave the rest. So think about, like, the mystical, uh, the, 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 um, the mystical time. We still do um, all sorts of drumming circles. Like Reverend Jim, I mean, like Reverend Denise likes to do. We still do birthdays. We still do celebrations because we like that part. That's still a part of us from way back when. It's still a part of who we are. The next car is going to be the orange, and that was about 400 to 100 years ago. So now we're getting closer to today. All right, the orange. We began to question authority and rules. We were moving into the modern industrial age. The way we began to think was more scientific. I mean, think about the science, scientific um, things that have happened just in maybe our lifetime. And I know, Susan, you're, you, you probably live longer than anyone here. You've seen, I mean, imagine all the things that you've seen in your life, right? And the train keeps a moving, right? Um, Orange enjoys life success status and growth, and it's open to ideas and possibilities and acquiring material rewards. I 
have to say that that probably is right where um, many of us are today. The God of Orange is a God of universal in thinking. It's a God of the human spirit. It's a God that wants us to succeed. Now think about what unity says. We say that God, God is good, that there is this energy of life that only wants us to have good things, right, and be blessed. So that kind of falls in a little bit with what Unity says now. The God of Orange um, uh, yeah, wants us to be successful, but not just obey. The Orange God dwells within us. Hmm. That sounds familiar. Mm. It wants no dogma. There's no room for guilt. Little is sacred for the God of Orange. You know, so many things, I remember years ago, I think of what church I was in. Uh, anyway, that we were doing something, getting ready for some ceremony or whatever, and the person that was the administrator, this was way back when I was at Renaissance, the administrator there, we were kind of moving stuff around on the platform and all that, and it was like, well, she was afraid like to touch certain things because, you know, they were considered so sacred. In a, in a Catholic tradition, I understand that. You know, you just don't go up and mess around with stuff on the, on the altar. And it was just kind of interesting how, you know, right now, um, you know, we just continue to move things around and make them beautiful for us, and we just know it's all okay. Uh, because of our world of success and materialism has brought us true happiness, because it hasn't, guess what? Then we began to turn within. Hmm. Yeah. This isn't really doing it. So I'm turning within. That's the God that unity talks about, along with the green consciousness, the green color now, or that meme as we're moving along the train, emerged about a hundred years ago. Civil rights, ecology. We began to seek a consensus for decisions and pursue humanitarian efforts. Does this sound familiar though? I mean, can you see how we've come along? along the line here of evolving, we began to find harmony and acceptance and unity as we began to understand our inner nature, that it's good, that we have feelings for others, that we have compassion. The God is the God of humankind is equal. Now, that's like, like yeah, that's what we kind of talk about. But has everybody caught on to that idea yet? We, have, we still have a lot of strife. We still have a lot of people that don't see others as equal to them. So see how it, it doesn't happen overnight. We're still going, we're still on that train and we're still moving. Um, most, God is masculine and feminine. How many times have we heard uh, ministers and others and maybe ourselves pray, you know, Father, Mother, God, right? So that idea has is in this particular part of the train. Uh, God offers peak experiences and multiple mystical paths. And isn't that what unity says? There's many paths to God. There's just not one. We can honor any religion because we just know there's not one path. But that's an idea that has come along over, I um, mean, this is in the last hundred years. So we went from 250,000 to 100. So it's taken a long time for us to begin to see something a little bit different. And then now we're in yellow. That's about 50 years ago. And that's kind of where we, where we see ourselves also. We live in an environment of integration without judgment. Again, not everybody's here. Some people are still back here on the train. And some of us have moved along. We got a little bit of the green, possibly, the little bit of, of that understanding of God within. And now we're in the, into um, the, uh, the yellow where we're seeing the um, integration without judgment. Life is a kaleidoscope. We've been talking about, and Reverend Denise, the web of life. We're all connected. Um, the magnificence, this, I like, love this one. The magnificent of existence is greater than material possessions. How many of us have said, I don't need all my stuff anymore? It doesn't do anything for me. It doesn't make me happy. You know, we've come to that realization that all this stuff out here doesn't really do that for us. We understand better the complexities of life, like the butterfly effect. I mean, maybe you've heard of that, where a butterfly can, can um, just 
through his wings in Africa, and it literally has has a um, an effect on the whole world. But it's because of science we've been able to understand these things and realize that we are so interconnected. Um, let's see. Our lives can improve through the way we're thinking. Isn't that exactly what we teach? Thoughts held in mind, produce after their kind, is one of the, our little catchphrases here. Uh, the yellow god fosters the magnificent of existence and is the god of all religions and people and the ecumenical movement. And then we finally have turquoise, which has been the last 30 years. The world is a single dynamic organism with its own collective mind. Holistic, intuitive thinking, cooperative actions are to be expected. The turquoise god or the god that's in that particular train or that view out that window from the train is a god that manifests as individuals. And isn't that what we talk about? God, ex God is you. God is expressing as you. Ta-da. Now, again, not everybody's going to see this. I could still be back here in red, you know, thinking that i got to defend myself and I'm going to take what you have. And we see it in the world today with the countries um, in other parts of the world, right? They're still fighting amongst themselves. It's like, oh, let's go. Let's evolve a little bit. Let's start seeing this person as my neighbor instead of my enemy. This is our land. It's not yours or yours. And then we keep moving along. And then we start saying, well, you know what? Um, I, I don't want, you can worship the God you want. I'll worship the God I want. We don't have to fight over what God we're going to, we're going to worship. You see how, you see how this is working? Do you see how magnificent this is? And we are not at the end of the line yet. Won't it be interesting to see what happens as time goes on? As consciousness continues to awaken, what will it be like in another 50 years? 10? 100? Who knows? But you can, can you see how this, is, how this is flowing? So when somebody is, is thinking about something way back here, I go, okay, I get it. They, they, they don't understand. And I can be much more compassionate. I can be much more accepting. I can be much more um, uh, sitting there with them, even though they're saying things that I, I don't even get. But I can say, okay, but you do. This is how you're thinking. This is how you see things. And I can be there with you, even if I don't agree. Right? That was my big awakening for me. That was it. I thought, you know what? Live and let live. Maybe that's the phrase, right? Why do I have to convince you that what I'm doing is the right thing and what you're doing is not? No need. No need to do that. <clears throat> so what are some things um, that we can do to help to even seed new consciousness? Every time we forgive ourselves or others, we raise our consciousness. Every time we send thoughts of love to an another instead of anger or hostility, we raise consciousness. Every time we pray and remind ourselves of our oneness with the source of life that created us, we raise consciousness. <laughs> Every time we move out of fear to something that we are called to do, we raise consciousness. Every time we do an act of kindness, we raise it. Every time we refuse to be affected by the ways of the world and think differently, we raise consciousness. Every time an old way of thinking comes up for us and we stop and say an affirmation that aligns us with truth, we raise consciousness. We have got this. We know we have an effect on this. We know we do. Let's just go do it. Let's just help the world raise its consciousness so we can all finally live in peace and harmony and love. Is it possible? Please say yes. 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 <laughs> Amen. And so yes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, as we move into meditation, I know Robert's got a beautiful song that's going to Whisk us into meditation, so I invite you to close your eyes, relax, take a breath. We've been on a long journey, 250,000 years, 
Let's just enjoy the music and sit in this in the space Thanks. of this music. Thank you. We pray for blessings. We pray for peace. Comfort for family, protection while we sleep. We pray for healing, for prosperity. We pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. And all the while, you hear each spoken need. You love us way too much to give us lesser things. Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? And what if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? What if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? We pray for wisdom, your voice to hear. We cry in anger when we cannot feel you near. We doubt your goodness. If every promise from your word is not enough. And all the while, you hear each desperate plea and long that we have faith to just believe. Because what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if the Are your mercies in disguise? When friends betray us, when darkness seems to win, we know the pain reminds this heart that this is not, this is not our home. What if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know your need? What if our greatest disappointments are the aches of this life? What if trials of this life, the rain, the storms, the hardest nights, what if they're your blessings in disguise?
Look around the room at all the people that are on the train with you. Yep, we're all on the train. We're all going together. So this is our time to um, have our offering. So we know we have a basket in the back for our offering at the end of the Sunday service. And those of you online that would love to contribute to Unity uh, Williamsburg Spiritual Center, just know that we are blessed by whatever your heart feels like it would like to give on this day. And we hold that blessing in our hand as we say our offering blessing, that divine love together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I
come and experience it yourself. Yes. So let us just bless that our, just say a little prayer over our, the, the offerings that we're receiving today. And we just know that whatever we give, we give with that joyful heart. We know that whatever we give comes back to us. Heaped up, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Because as soon as I give, man, I already feel the blessing coming back to me. And for that, we are so grateful. Uh, Reverend Jan's got a few announcements here. If it's you'd like to come on up here. Well, I always like to make some kind of little comment about the service, but I don't know which side part to comment on today. <laughs> <laughs> because there's one great, beautiful feeling that we have carried home today. We can carry home the idea that God is within us. We can carry home the idea that we have been on this train. And we can go over the idea of the fact that we still have a train to go on. We can still have two or three cars ahead of us. And that can be wonderful in our own minds and our own hearts. So we say, together, I'm going to say again. And the people said, Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> Uh, we have the privilege on Sunday morning after church for one individual who is a member of the chaplain's group here can meet in the back and if you have a prayer time that you would like to have uh, more private and personal, then you can meet with whoever the chaplain is for that particular Sunday. And today it is Jane Siegel and she will be in the back with you and I think that it's up to her where she meets back there. Sometimes they, they prefer one place over another. So just look for Jane Siegel in the back, and if you would like to have a prayer for just a private service this morning in that respect. Uh, we have, uh, if you also have any particular prayers that you would like to have done, you can also send them to an uh, email at prayer, uh, uh, yeah, prayer unity Williamsburg at gmail.com. So if you want something that you just want to put on a paper that you want lasted, well then send it right in there. You know, we are a church, and the church just isn't run all mechanically. We have to have people that will be willing to not only serve, but serve themselves in a certain way. So if you feel that there's a place in this church that you would like to help serve, feel free to see a Reverend Jenny or a Reverend Denise, either one. And one place that you could always do, and that is serve as a board member. If you would like to know what's going on and have a part of what is going on in the church, go we'll volunteer to be a board member. So you're always welcome to that. We'd love to have you in some way or another. And we know that um, we have something very, very special that is coming up. In fact, I'm looking forward to it very much, and that is a um, concert, a piano concert. And Robert is going to be giving a concert on um, an ivory Christmas. And it'll be on November the 12th. December. 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 Well, okay. Can I say the November? <laughs> December the 12th. And it's a Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock. And 7 o'clock, 7 30. Uh, is that? Another show. Another show. Yep. Another show. Is it on the Saturday also? Mm -hmm. Same day. Okay. okay, same day. All right. A two for one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll get, or he is going to be giving a, a piano concert. And I think this is going to be a fantastic thing. I will drive my 17 miles <laughs> and make sure that I am here. And maybe I'll stay for the second one. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, it's going to be worth the while for more than one reason. When was the last time in this year that you were able to get out and do something that was different? You didn't go to the grocery store or whatever like that? <laughs> It's, it's a one thing that we want to need it to do, and we have it now. We can't complain that there's nowhere to go and nothing to do. <laughs> so we have Robert to thank for this, and we know that he, and we all know a little bit about his abilities, 
so we know it's going to be a fantastic time. So we'll expect to see everybody there. So <clears throat> now we're going to ask Robert if he would like to say something. About well, this. yeah, you know what? The reason we're doing two shows. Uh, is partly because in order to comply with the rules of social distancing and limited capacity, um, I'm limited to 50 tickets per show. And the tickets went on sale the other day. There's a link at Eventbrite. I don't know if any of you have used that before, but it's the premier source for ticketing. Um, if you go online uh, for Eventbrite, E-V-E-N-T-B-R-I-T-E, um, and we can certainly put that in the newsletter. We can send it out. We have plenty of time to deal with this. But all you have to do is search under my name, and the show will come up, and it'll talk about unity in the venue. Um, but the thing that when we announced the show last week, we did um, my comments went by so quickly. The next thing I realized that the, I had neglected to tell you that a portion of the proceeds from the ticket sales are in fact coming to the church. Mm -hmm. So this is also a fundraiser. It's a way to, to help put some money in the coffers. Uh, a rebate on my services, if you will. And that way, we also uh, use my audience and the people that like my music and make them aware of the church and my connection with it now. Um, we did the show last year here for the first time, um, and it was exactly what I wanted it to be. We put the piano up here, we made a little stage, and honestly, I had hoped in my mind as I created the show that it would feel like you were all in my living room and we were just having Christmas together, and that's exactly what I got. So I'm aiming for that with even maybe a little more intimacy and a little more uh, closeness. But as Jan said, this year has been so devastating for, for me and for everybody else that I know, especially musicians, that I can't bear the idea of Christmas coming without doing something to maybe tap into the joy that only Christmas could bring us at this time. So it was more important than ever to put this show together and if I'm going to do it twice, that's just double the fun for me. And uh, I'm, I'm thrilled, and I hope that you'll be here because it, it'll be a special night, I promise. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Well, we can second that. It'll be a, a special day to have a visa. We know a little bit about you, well, thank you. So we I know a little bit about you, too. <laughs> <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> Getting that Christmas feeling, even though we may be a little bit sad here or there, but we can have that Christmas feeling and would we'll say thank you to Robert for giving it to us. Thank you. Is there anything else that we would like to have mentioned at this time? Chair? Yes. Oh. I'd like to thank everyone who contributed for um, yes. the food and the clothing and got a few rubber bags to load up and I'll be dropping them off at Link next week, probably Monday morning. And um, I am truly grateful for all of you all participating and I can absolutely be certain that they will be grateful too. So thank you so much. You pretty much have a car load, don't you? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how much the contributions have been. Yes. Well, I think what we need to always think too, we always think about uh, giving at Christmas time and this sort of thing. But today there is so many variations of people and ages and that need to have our help and our uh, <clears throat> as Chris, but our clothing as such. So as a result, we need to think about the more people and the variation of people. I know with myself, huh, I don't think I'll give this this year. Well, that's okay. They're, they can use this. We can go that direction. But in reality, Everybody can use everything that we might have to give away. All right, do we have anything else? Okay. I just wanted to mention, um, since we're coming up on the holiday season, as people are shopping, if you do shop on Amazon, it's really easy to help our church get a kickback from your purchases. If instead of just going to Amazon.com, you go to Smile. Amazon.com. If you go to Amazon.com and you look up in the top uh, left corner under the logo, there's actually a little, um, there's some words there that say if you want to switch to SmileAmazon.com. But if you do shop through Smile Amazon, um, you're able to designate Unity, and on that side it's Unity Fellowship. 
um, you're able to designate us as your um, as your nonprofit to donate to you. Um, and already this year, just from purchases that people have made, and I think it's been a lot of me, um, we, because <laughs> Amazon's where I live all year, um, we have already gotten about $200. It's just a kickback. So those are things that you're already purchasing. So just keep that in mind as you're holiday shopping this year. Fantastic. Thank you, Amos. I think that is very well put, and I hope that it was very well uh, received. I hope everybody heard it, because for already having received $200 for this kickback situation with Amazon is worth your time and effort, and you can say, I, too, made a difference. <clears throat> And one of the things that Amy said, they don't increase prices if, you, if you're if you going to do a contribution to a church or whatever. And make sure you go to the, it says Unity Fellowship and when you sign up for it. And then I'm noticing now when I go to Amazon, it'll say, do you want to you want to use your Smile account? And then it'll take me to the Smile account. So it really does, um, it, it's, it's kind of interesting how we can make a little bit extra here from buying the stuff we're going to buy anyway and using Amazon. So... Just another plug. <laughs> well, I think that was good being always remember all the little plugs that we have. Mm -hmm. So do we have anything else? Otherwise, I guess we are ready to uh, sing our peace song. Sing our peace song. Yeah. <laughs>